It's late 1940, the domain of the Axis overwhelms the whole of Western Europe. Momentarily stopped by the English Channel, the German army joins forces for an imminent invasion of Britain. However, there is a man in the British command who is not resigned to play a merely defensive role. His name is Colonel Dudley Clark. His plan, to create a special unit with a fistful of exceptional men. Men skillful enough to deal with all kinds of equipment and weaponry. Men able to engage the enemy in the most dangerous missions. Men able to change the course of the war. These men were destined to make history. It's June the 4th, 1940. The evacuation of Allied troops from Dunkirk has ended. Heavy human and material losses have been sustained. In that same day, British and French troops begin to demolish the port facilities in Narvik. This will be their last action before evacuating Norway and leaving it under German occupation. On June the 7th, the Norwegian king and his government go into exile in London. This will be the beginning of a dark period for the Scandinavian country. Allied troops will not set foot on Norway again for a very long time, with the exception of the commandos. Due to its particular climate, long distances, difficult communications and isolated towns, Norway is an ideal testing field to put into practice the first incursion tactics of this newly founded unit. Russia declares war. A massive production effort begins as Stalin prepares to defend against the Axis advances. Astounding numbers of troops march proudly through Red Square, each man ready to protect his homeland with his life. As the huge army moves to stop the Axis assault, the rest of the world looks on with hope as another great nation joins the Allied fight. The United States of America have declared war on the Axis powers. Thousands of brave troops are being mobilized across the great nation. Everywhere the mighty machines of war are being built and loaded onto transports. As husbands and sons prepare to cross over the sea and support the Allied fight, their American families are praying for victory and a swift return. In 1941, the north of Africa witnesses the start of one of the most fierce and decisive campaigns of the war. At the start of the year, the British troops lead a successful series of advances in Libya. But the situation was about to change. In February, the first units of the German Africa Corps arrive in Tripoli. They are commanded by a man who will soon be known as the Desert Fox, Erwin Rommel. The effect will be immediate. Rommel troops throw out the English from Libya and penetrate Egypt, forcing the British forces to make a dramatic retreat. More than one year later, at El Alamein, the Allied army is given a new commander-in-chief, Bernard Montgomery, a thin, bad-tempered man whose Blackberry will soon be an icon for the British forces in Africa. Both Allies and Germans are getting prepared for a fierce battle around the Egyptian city. The role of the commanders will be vital, harassing the enemy with small, sustained incursions against supply and communication lines. In summer 1944, a contingent of nearly three million Allied troops are gathered in southern England under the command of General Eisenhower. They are ready to begin Operation Overlord, the definitive attack over the European continent. Exhaustive preparations take place in the midst of an absolute secret. Meanwhile, at the other side of the English Channel, General von Rundstedt awaits the attack from the heavily fortified coasts. The commanders will be among the first to land. Their mission, to weaken coastal defenses and destroy supply lines. Everybody is waiting for Eisenhower to decide on the final issue, the precise day of the landings in Normandy, the D-Day. In 
It's late 1944. Most of France has been liberated. Now the Allies plan the final assault over the German army. A vast victory is needed. Otherwise, the enemy will gain time to entrench on Germany and finish the development of their new, powerful secret weapons. While the Soviet troops advance from the east, Western armies get focused on one objective, to liberate Belgium and the lowlands, cross the Rhine and head for the heart of the Third Reich. The abilities of the commandos will be of great help in this enterprise. On the 2nd of May 1945, General Jodl signs the final surrender of Germany. Four months later, Allied forces accept the capitulation of the Japanese Emperor. Crowds full of joy welcome victorious soldiers in the streets of a new, free world. Thanks to the effort of millions of people, the threat of Nazism has been suffocated. The war is over. And there's a bunch of exceptional men who have been privileged actors and witnesses of some of its most dramatic and decisive moments. A small, brave group of commandos. <laughs> 